Now that we've talked about gear, weapons and skills, I thought it was around time to go over one last topic before we enter the beta. And that is the different type of ammo, different type of grenades and all the different consumables in the game. Because even though you don't necessarily need food and water to stay alive, you can still pick up food and water and also a whole lot of other things to give yourself several advantages in combat. So let's see what this game has to offer, shall we? Every inventory in the game has an object limit. In the case of this level 4 player that you can see on the screen right now, he has a total of 34 slots for the normal gear and 6 slots for the contaminated items. But obviously, as you get better and level up a few times, you will get better equipment and also a better backpack, which will allow you to carry a lot more. Uh, if we take this level 21 player, for example, he has a total of 54 normal slots and 8 dark zone slots. Now, 34 or 54 may not seem like a whole lot, but the thing that you have to keep in mind is that these slots only count for your complete weapons, your gear and your mod. A lot of the other things that you find within the game goes into the pouches menu and doesn't really count towards your inventory space. In this pouches tab, the player will be able to store all sorts of grenades, consumables and ammunition. And here, everything has their own independent limit, which of course, you will also be able to increase as you play the game. So let's take a look at a few of these objects, starting off with all the grenades. More precisely, the EMP grenade. This thing will destroy any active skills in the area, and also, if you manage to hit an enemy with it, it will prevent him from activating new skills for a short period of time. Now, I feel like that this grenade is going to be the counter to so many things. The enemy puts up a shield, well, simply throw an EMP grenade. The enemy drops a healing station, well, simply throw an EMP grenade. The enemy is about to die, well, throw an EMP grenade at the healer, so he cannot heal his teammates up. I've gotta say, it will probably be a little bit more difficult than I'm making it sound like right now, but this thing really reminds me of a silence in MOBA games where you deny the enemy from using any abilities for a short period of time, and I really think it's a cool thing to see it in this game as well. Next up, we have the flashbang grenade, and uh, to be honest with you, this isn't that special. It gives a, a blind and a death effect to anyone who gets hit, which I really feel like this is going to be one of those things that will only be good versus the NPCs, but I'm not sure how strong the effect of the flash actually is, so we'll have to wait and see for that. To the right, there is the normal grenade, which, uh, you know, it just deals damage, but uh, in the division, it also has a chance of adding a bleed effect. Now, from looking at this footage, I believe that the bleed effect actually just stops the player from getting back his health. You can see that it doesn't regenerate until the bleed effect is gone. Then we get to the next one, we have the incendiary grenade. Uh, this basically is exactly what it sounds like. It's a grenade that uh, releases fire in an area and if the players get hit by the explosion or walk over it afterwards, well, they can catch on fire, which slowly damages them over time. It looks pretty cool, but I personally don't think it's going to be that strong because in fact, you're basically trading the instant damage of a frag grenade for damage over time, which is always a little bit easier to heal back up. And on top of that, there are also some consumables which can instantly remove the on-fire effect, but we'll get into that very soon. Here's a very interesting one, the shock grenade. This will temporarily paralyze any enemy caught in the blast radius, meaning that if you hit an enemy player with this, he will be unable to do anything for a short period of time. I really hope that well-coordinated teams will be able to chain these together to completely stun lock someone and then potentially burst him down in just a few seconds. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see just how effective this is versus other players as well. And then last up for the grenades, we have the tear gas grenade, which will disorient the enemy. Uh, from what I've seen, this is probably the weakest of them all. It has a small visual effect for anyone hit and uh, reduces the accuracy by quite a bit, but nothing major, really. It may be good for fighting NPCs, though, because they seem to be unable to do anything when under this effect, but uh, versus other players, I'm not too sure here. And those are all the grenades, but now that we've had those, it's time to move on to the six consumables. Starting off with the canned food, which increases all the healing received by 40% for a whole 30 seconds. Then to the right of that, there is the energy bar, which is the thing that I talked about earlier. If you use this, it will instantly remove all the debuff effects, so that includes the on-fire effect as well that comes with the incendiary grenade. Then there is water, which really seems like a situational thing to be honest with you, because it increases your damage versus elites by 20% for 30 seconds. And, uh, well, I really think it's going to depend on really how much elites you have to fight at a time, but, uh, yeah, for PvP, it's not gonna be too useful. 
Then there is a soda that reduces skill cooldowns by 30%, which I can really see being very helpful for those healers. Uh, and then last up, we have the two special bullet types. We have incendiary bullets and explosive bullets, and I believe these require some explanation as well. If you take a quick look at the ammunition tab, you will see that there are six types of ammo. You have the ammo for the assault rifles, the light machine guns, the marksman rifles, pistols, shotguns and submachine guns. And these are the different ammo types that you can collect. Now above that, under the consumables tab, you will see the incendiary bullets and the explosive bullets. But these types of ammo are, like I said, considered consumables. This pretty much means that just like the food and the water, you can activate or consume these. And when you do so, all of your weapons will fire either the explosive bullets or the incendiary bullets for a limited amount of time. One thing to keep in mind is that after using a consumable, you will not be able to use another one right away. There will still be a small cooldown under your health bar. And just like with the skills, until that cooldown is back up, you will just simply not be able to select another consumable. Now, other than the ammunition, the consumables and the grenades, there are three more things to look at here. We have the lockpicks, which can be used to open those locked doors in uh, abandoned buildings. Then we have dark zone keys, which you'll need to open those special crates. And of course we have the med kits, which, well, you use them to heal yourself back up. To the right of that you can also see all the crafting material, but uh, we already talked about that. So if you want to know more about that, you can click on the screen right now or, you know, one of the links in the description. Take all these things that we talked about and combine it with the skills that can be heavily modified. And you can see how players just have so much options and so much possibilities for plays and counter plays and all that stuff. For example, you have the turret, which you can modify to stun enemies. But then the enemies can drop down the support station with a mod that makes people invulnerable to stuns. But then you can throw down an EMP grenade to destroy the opponent's support station. So you can keep making plays and counter plays to just try to kill each other. And I know that yes, player level and gear are very important. Maybe even more important than skill. And I know that a level 5 player will never be able to win a fight versus a level 15 player. But when you're both max level and you both have all the gear that you want and you both have your setup going... I really hope that these things will start to matter a lot because it can make for some very exciting PvP gameplay. And uh, that was pretty much it for today's video. Now, before I go, I want to give a big thanks to Eric's Gaming and Silentcore for letting me use all the recorded footage over the past couple of weeks. I'm pretty sure that without it, I would not have had as much videos out, so uh, you can pretty much thank them for that as well. And also, let me know which topic you would like me to talk about after the beta, because I'm sure that um, after the beta, we've, uh, we've got a whole lot to talk about. Anyway, as always, I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys later. Or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later.